Hello everybody and welcome back to Sunday Vibes. Now if you're a fan of Football Daily from about six years ago, we've got a real six treat for you. It's Dave Jackson back in the sea. This is the Football Daily heritage, baby. It's been a long time, It man. has been a long time. Last time probably was Team Talk, where yeah. we were... Well, if we can get the clip up, where you guys horribly said that Martinez is a better defender than, Gab than uh, William Saliba. Which that was last season. was the reason I decided to never come back on again. <laughs> because it was, it was not last season. It, it was pre-season this season. It was pre-season this and season, okay. I, I mean, some of those Team Talk takes haven't aged too well, so I can speak for, from the heart. Yeah. But it's lovely to be back. Good man. I feel uh, it's a nice time to come on. Yeah, what's been, what's been, I mean, these guys wouldn't have seen you in, in years. What's been going on? You're, you're a father for the second time? Second time, had a second child, Oscar. He's six months old. Shout out, Oscar. Judas big free. Gooner. Just uh, He is a big gooner. He knows um, my oldest son, who's free, uh, knows all the words to uh, North London forever. Really? Uh, poor boy. Which, yeah, exactly. <laughs> poor uh, boy. Um, but yeah, I've become a father for the second time. Congratulations, congratulations. Well, we will hopefully have three people back on next week, but we've got the Cubs is on holiday, there's various shoots, etc. But with the big man in the building, one of the biggest gooners around, biggest gooner in Sky, some say, you and Merce. Big time. <laughs> now, I, I, actually, Paul Merce is a big Chelsea fan. He is originally, isn't he, actually? Yeah. He is, which is why he always makes some sort of, you know, slightly favourable comments about them. But we are going to talk Arsenal. I mean, you were at the game last night. We are filming this, filming this on Thursday to watch you guys beat Luton 2-0. Yep. You went with your nephew, who you've indoctrinated as well. Big time. Thoughts on the game? Changed well, lineup, but you got the job done. It was just about getting the three points, I think. Um, it, they played well in patches, but I don't think they played well for, for, for most of the game, really. It was, 2-0 two, two was probably a fair result, but there was, there was a, definitely parts of the ground that got a bit nervy, and I think there was a bit of fear that Luton, if they were to nick one, something that could have been quite a comfortable evening could turn into quite like an edgy um you know they they um they, they played it uh, to be fair i think Luton actually played okay even though i didn't really create too much i mm. think we actually managed the game well but obviously as a fan you don't feel it like that way because your your heart's in your mouth a little bit more than what it probably should have been um but i think i think fair result it was nice to see some of our more fringe players get some yeah, minutes I was gonna ask, how did they play like nelson smith rowe <sighs> they did okay like there's none of the players that came in that are legitimately pushing for a starting place, which I think is probably one of the things we're probably going to come on to talk mm -hmm. about. Um, it was actually one of the things that gave me the most fear because towards like the from about the 70th minute mark, the players like Smith Rowe, Nelson, even Thomas Party, they started to look quite leggy. And obviously, when players get to that stage, that's when mistakes starts to happen. You know, you 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 played the the wrong pass and you've you've put a striker in and then you. 2-1 uh, then the score's 2-1 um, but as a whole I think the team played well um, it was a perfect game I think for Thomas Party. I know he hasn't really made any headlines post game it's all about Smith Rowe and you know maybe the some of the things around Reese Nelson but I think for t Thomas Party to get 75-80 minutes under his belt um, that was the most encouraging thing for me when I look towards now and the end of the season because clearly Arteta's long-term plan is to play him and um, Declan Rice. Um, so for him to get the minutes under his belt is very encouraging to see. You don't fan. think he's going to be sold this summer? You just think he's going to stay? I think if the right offer came in, obviously he would go. But um, I, I can, if, if I was a betting person, I would say he, he's still within the club um, uh, this time next year. Fair enough. We will get on to that. We're actually going to talk about signings that could improve Arsenal. I mean, it seems ridiculous to say we're still eight games to go this season and very much in that title race, in the hunt for the Champions League as well. But we are looking ahead to next season already. We are also going to touch on the title race as well, but a little bit on Luton as well. I mean, they were missing 11 players as well. It's not mm -hmm. just Arsenal that were resting players. Saka, not fit enough to even make the bench, which is a little bit of a concern ahead of Brighton this weekend. Uh, I think if it had been against stronger opposition he probably would have at the very least been on the bench I think it was quite nice timing mm -hmm. um, even when Martinelli came on he did not look fit at all and only about 10-15 minutes but he, he, he's not quite he's definitely not quite himself yet um, so yeah obviously big 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 game on Saturday um, for them two players you know you'd like to think they're both definitely be in the squad um, and then we'll kind of see how we get on but I, I've got no concerns about uh, uh, about uh, like Bakayasaka. Fair um, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Also, shout out Kai Havertz, another assist as well. 
Eight S- goals, four assists in the league this season. 60 million down the drain. <laughs> I have that scores. You I, sh- I just love about the turnaround. I, just, I, I absolutely love him. Like, he Where do you love him best, playing position-wise? Not as a striker. Really? Just, just off on that kind of left, um, like kind of like left centre area, just mm-hmm. almost like behind. Like, do you know anything I love about him as well? He's he's nasty. Really? Like like he he he, can get he, his foot in. he can look after himself. He he kind of know it's it's going to like definitely cost us at some stage where he's going to overstep the mark a little bit and he's probably going to get himself sent off. But like we're a big side now, and we and it, it's it's we're actually quite an imposing team now. A bit like City last year. Somebody yeah. felt like they became very physical and now you've responded. Yeah, we, we don't we don't get bullied anymore. You know, and I think and and part of that is not just having the physicality um kind of on the ball but off the ball mm. as well, where like, you know, players like Kyber can leave an elbow where they maybe need to leave an elbow or, you know, get a crowd rolled up when they need to. Like it's 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 an underrated aspect mm-hmm. um, to his game, I think. As I say, at some stage it is gonna cost us. I think he's only one booking away from a two game suspension. So he needs to behave himself and stay calm and be able be able to show that level of composure. But um, yeah, that that's the aspect of his game that obviously I never saw when he was at kind of like Chelsea or because as like an opposing fan, you 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 just don't see that side mm-hmm. of things. But uh, from an Arsenal point of view, yeah, I, I love I love the <laughs> I love the nastiness of him. <laughs> um, but obviously, as like a footballer, fantastic footballer. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I mean, most of his goal contributions, I think it's five goals and three assists in, in eleven as a centre forward this season, which is a pretty impressive return. And his goals uh, and assists per ninety ratio has dropped from three hundred twenty three minutes at Chelsea last year to one hundred and sixty two. So he's pretty much halved it uh, in terms of his effectiveness. And you know, there was a lot of criticism about him coming in, um, but I do think he's sli- starting to repay. The, the money invested in him. You look at the, the player signed for uh, over £50 million last summer. Mason Mount's been unlucky with injury, but most of them have kind of hit the ground running, to be fair. Even Hoyland's has a lot of promising minutes. Caicedo's played well in patches for Chelsea, maybe not consistently enough. And, and Declan Rice, who we'll come on to in just a second. I mean, what a signing that's proved out to be. You know, it's weird to say almost a bargain at whatever it was, £100 million, but he's been absolutely sensational. But also Kai Havertz, he scores some important goals, which I think is, is again, something that maybe when you just look at like a player's numbers on paper, you probably don't quite get the context, mm-hmm. but two match winners against Brentford, like where if you if you took four points off us now, we'd, we're basically out of the title race with nine games, with eight games to go. So extremely important goals, which, yep. is, which is... And I think the goal he scored when we beat Brentford away was the start of his Arsenal career properly because that, that was that was that was the, that the was last the, minute yeah. that, that was the moment he needed to start to get the fans completely on side um, for him to start to feel like the, the main person in the Arsenal team as well rather than just a Chelsea player who's playing for Arsenal he's now an Arsenal player yeah. who's starting to excel in that position as well I think Arsenal fans will love that as well you've lost so many players to rivals and they've gone on to do great things in the last decade you know, Fabregas eventually going to Chelsea, Nasri, Clichy, Van Persie, of course, players like that. So to take a player from Chelsea and then to do better at Arsenal than Chelsea, it's just really nice, I think, for Arsenal fans. And they will no doubt relish that for the rest of the season. Uh, right, before we get into what is going to happen this summer, we can't talk about anything to do with Arsenal without talking about the title race, Dave. I mean, you do have a huge month ahead of you. Big time. Are you, how are you feeling about it? Are you confident? Where are you on the scale? Who are you most scared of? Give me the details of your thoughts right now. Well, of course I'm... He's I'm, thinking about this. No, well, the thing is, like, I'm, I'm always a very confident Arsenal fan. <laughs> you are. All right. And I believe any time we step on the pitch that we should be going to win the game or at least get a positive result. Um, if With I l- that in mind, sorry to interject. Do you think you should have pushed harder for a win last weekend, or is that one of those games where you just no, say? No, I was point. extremely happy with the point. Yeah, I think. I agree. That is a that is a. Before the game, I was like, we 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 can't lose, and for the neutral, they must have thought they, they must have been an absolutely horrible game of football to watch. It wasn't brilliant. It was almost just as horrible as an Arsenal fan because <laughs> you're thinking we've, we've seen the script before. We've played well here. We played extremely well defensively. We've kind of like suffocated, arguably the best team on the planet, and. When, when they had that corner in like the 94th minute, I thought, <laughs> here we go. Someone laps of concentration. And, but, but that's another aspect to the game. Is, I know we're scoring goals now, particularly that, that last six games pre-City, free-flowing. Free but we're so 
structurally strong now like we don't concede chances and if you're not conceding chances you're not going to concede goals Mr Captain obvious no, but, no. Like, but it's like and I think that's the bigger You've got the best defence in Europe by expected goals against there you go um, enough said and it just and that was another thing about the game against Luton like we weren't giving up chances and I think that that then breeds confidence mm. that 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 is the foundation of this current run that we're on and um, so anyway back to the title race yes uh, I do feel confident I'm as a as a long Arsenal fan I've, I've been doing this for like a while like Joe like it's just amazing to be in these positions like I was actually re-watching the um, Arsenal All or Nothing recently mm. and I would actually recommend anyone to go back and have a watch of some of that stuff it's like you, you some of the stuff that Arteta was putting in place then you are seeing the fruition to it now and I think and it's easy to look back and gloat when it's worked but in the time in the moment he has honestly done an absolutely phenomenal job he's taking pelters at stages as well like there was there was a there was a period during like uh, like lockdown well, I think if we hadn't beat United, we we would have we would I think we lost we would have lost like eleven games or something like that. Uh, over like twelve, so we beat United. That gives you a bit of grace period. Won the cup, which gave a massive piece of um, kind of like the grace period. But the, the job that Arteta's done is just just brings tears to my eyes <laughs> because like we might have our first ever crying. Session. No, but it's it's like it, it, on Sunday vibes. It, it I know it sounds obvious, but like. It, it shouldn't be taken for granted. You're in the depths as well. It, massively. Like, you know, and, and the, with the, to the point where you, you, you couldn't see a way back to genuinely challenging for major honours. Like, it, we were so far from that. I cannot stress that enough. Like, on our day, yeah, we can give anyone a game. But, and that's the big difference as well. Like, we've built in consistency. And that is the big difference. That is the difference between Liverpool and City over the past eight years and actually everybody else it's just a level of consistency mm. when you're not playing well don't lose mm -hmm. and that, that's, that's, that's the thing that we have to get into and I think the, the scary bit about the next nine games or like the run in is we can't afford to have a blip even draws now and mm -hmm. it's basically gone yeah. because it's two teams would have to drop points it's not just one so yes I'm confident yes I think we can do it um, and I think it's important we just I, I generally think we, should, we shouldn't be resting anymore now. Just Full best, throttle. best 11 and then what will be will be. If we get injuries because of it, then we'll have to deal with that. I mean, I think I know your best 11 everywhere. I mean, would that include a Jorginho Rice Odegaard midfield, I assume? And then I'm thinking Havertz, Saka and Martinelli on the left wing. But is Martinelli in your best 11 right now? Yes. If he's fit, hundred uh, yeah, hundred percent. And I think it's a bit it's a bit harsh on Jesus because I know strikers should score goals, but we play better when he's in the team. His general level of play I always thought was really yeah. good. Yeah. He's just it's just sometimes there's the the, the the one or two moments you get per game where you're like we Harlan need, we finishes need, yeah. that, Kane finishes yeah. that. Well, Harland maybe not. And, this and season, I guess I guess the thing, right? If if Jesus was that striker, then City wouldn't have got rid of him in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it kind of is what it is. But it shouldn't be. And again, Gabriel Jesus is a massive cornerstone in the team that we've become, and that should never be forgotten. So that's me um, showing a lot of love for Gabriel Jesus. Oh, I love it. Last year, particularly in that pre-World Cup phase, where you were absolutely amazing. I thought he was phenomenal. Yeah. I think it was Bournemouth away. And he, I know he, it was only Bournemouth, but it was one of the best performances I've seen in the last five years. He brought the standard up. He, br he, he improved the culture. And that's the kind of things that cannot be understated. And it's also, again, it's not me trying to slay off Man United, but that's one of the things that has dissolved in the post-Fergie era. It's not just having 11 or 13, 14 great players, it's the culture. It's the squad And players. they're not accepting the mediocrity. And that is one of the things that, again, a player like even um, Zinchenko, who again, like, he can have his crit criticisms, but he's a winner and he has brought the culture up. He, mm. he has improved the outlook of every player and set the standard so that when your form does dip below, the, below a seven or an eight it that, that doesn't become the norm it's like no no you've got to get back up to this level yeah absolutely i mean let's go into some of the specifics of this month because this month alone guys get a load of this brighton away then Bayern at home villa at home Bayern away wolves away chelsea at home spurs away 
That is the sort of month that can kill any title hope. Yep. Not saying it necessarily will. No, but that is a tough run of games. Let's start with Brighton. You've lost three of your last five games against Brighton. That is a worry. They beat yep. you at the Emirates this time last year. Admittedly, I think you are a very different side to then, and they are a very different side to then too. But that slightly worries me. Villa, I'm less concerned about in the league. I think they have dipped quite considerably. They've only won six of their last 14 games. In that period, they'd be sixth. They're still a very good side, but the Watkins injury, Jacob Ramsey not being available, thought they were pretty poor against Man City last night after the first sort of 60 minutes that, you know, really, really sort of, sort of crumbled away. I would worry about Wolves. Mm. Wolves have beaten Chelsea twice this year. They've beaten Spurs. They've beaten City. I don't think that's an easy game. Chelsea... You never know what you're going to get. They're playing in Man United tonight. I've got no idea what the score could be in that. Honestly, anything. But they have beaten Spurs, Brighton, Newcastle. They've drawn with City twice. They've drawn with you guys as well. And they actually outplayed you in that game. In terms of XG, at least. It was 1.7 to 1.1. Spurs, you have a great recent record against Spurs. You've beaten them four times in the last six games. But of, that, of those games in that, in that month, and I'm not even talking about Bayern because the Champions League is a different matter, who worries you the most in that sort of period? Are you like that? Is the game? I think Brighton through? away is a really tough game. This one, this week. I think um, they, they are. Are very you on Saturday or Sunday this week? Saturday, okay, half so five. Th- everyone will know the result. H- half five on Sky Sports. <laughs> Corporate. Here we go. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I think that's a massive game. I think um, like, th- to be honest, it sounds odd, but they, they, they are all massive games. Like, I, like, the, but they. I think it's all about momentum. Like, like it's almost like the Chelsea and the Spurs, they're almost irrelevant if we can't beat these games. Mm. Like we, we, ha- we have to keep winning. And um, I think we are a different team than what we were this time last year. We beat Brighton at home uh, away last year. We played very well. It was just after Christmas. I think it was one of the first games post World Cup. Um, and I don't think Brighton are the same team as they were last year. Um, so I think we need to go into these games like how we did in this little run pre-international break where we were essentially getting games won before the, before the, before the end of the first half mm-hmm. and I think if we can do that then yeah, there shouldn't, shouldn't be any on paper there shouldn't be teams they're, they're all winnable and but we just we need to set the tone we need to like I just hope they, they leave each of them games where like they couldn't have done any more. That's all I ask as a fan. <laughs> it's like, and, and I kind of back us to like come up with the tactical, like, it, almost like a new plan per team. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I think, I think the Brighton away is always going to be a tough game. I'll briefly touch on Bayern because obviously you're, you've got them at home next week, haven't you? Home on, on Wednesday. Tues- Tuesday? Tuesday, I think Tuesday, it is. Tuesday, yeah. Bayern can't bring any fans, which is quite a big factor because they've been done for pyrotechnics on the pitch. I think it's the second time this season. Bayern are such a weird side this year. Yeah. Honestly, up until the international break in De Classica, I thought there was a chance they might reel in Bar Leverkusen. I thought they were playing better than Bar Leverkusen in that particular moment. Yeah. But Bayern Leverkusen are just refusing to lose any game at the moment. It's now 40 games unbeaten. Absolutely remarkable. I think that's now done and dusted. Tuchel's said as much. In Der Classica at the weekend, which I know you were catching a bit of, they were so flat so insipid and just no just no aggression in a game and, and just looked like it was just passing them by Kane missed some big chances he had a goal ruled out for yeah. offside slightly unfortunately as well but individual player quality I think they can cause you some issues but if, if you play at your best and Bayern play at their or at the, their best this season I still think you get the job done in that I which I, I cannot believe I'm saying that about Arsenal Bayern but I do think you're a better side at the moment I think we have to take a lead to the Allianz that, that's like big a given um, I think the danger person is actually uh, like Musiala. Mm. Like even in a really poor form Bayern team, not a poor Bayern, I won't ever say poor Bayern team because it's still Bayern Munich, but in a poor form Bayern Munich, he was still the player that... He's exceptional. He's, how Chelsea have let him go is no. absolutely mind-boggling. Um, and how England have allowed that to happen. I know. Born in like, Southampton. Like, no, sorry, born in Germany, spent time in Southampton, then Chelsea, yeah, I think. Like he's pl- he's, he, him and Jude, they were best mates, right? Just bonkers anyway Bayern Munich we we need to impose ourselves on that game like if we not again fast start at home suffocate mm-hmm. just like try to an extent try and get it done in the first leg um, 
I can't, big statement. I, I can't believe I'm saying any of things, to be honest. <laughs> Um, if you could go back through the Football Daily archives, it, this is this is this like is rare stuff. Um, uh, I've I've had my heart broken by Bayern many. I've actually been to a few of them games the where like I just we got battered a few times, like mm. you know, and just um, so just it it's about us imposing our will on them, and just having no fear about it because they do have some excellent attacking players. They do. Uh, to be fair, our Defense. I don't. I can't. I, I don't want to jinx anything. You go for it. Jinx away. I feel like last couple of games, in particular, we've played well against Kane, but it's still Harry Kane, right? Mm-hmm. If he has half a sniff, I can already see the headlines. Harry, <laughs> Harry Kane haunts Arsenal. <laughs> Does have a great record against you guys. Eric Dyer masterclass at the back. <laughs> I can just already see it. But um, yeah, we just we just we we are. I I can confidently say that they are beatable and we can beat them Mm -hmm. and um, I saw Thomas Muller's quotes today he's extremely confident isn't he is he he reckons he reckons that uh, to be fair to him he said it's a different Arsenal team than I think he's I I can't remember the exact quote but it's like it's a different team than we used to batter you know (laughs) whatever the German equivalent to that was yeah yeah Um, but he's still confident that Bayern will come out on top playing that Glenn McGrath pre-Ashes role of just predicting and absolutely trouncing every time um, Fair enough, yeah. Thomas. Uh, right, let's talk about it quickly before we go on to the positions you need to strengthen. Yeah. Just quickly, what has been the biggest difference this season? Because I'm sure you want to talk about one man in particular, one new signing. I already mentioned him about ten minutes ago. Yeah. Declan Bloody Rice. He's unbelievable. I, I, I don't think any Arsenal. Because you've seen fan, some greats. I don't think any Arsenal fan realised he was just as good as he is. Like, the, and the bit I want to call out about Declan Rice is yeah, all this throughout the course of the season. But that first 20 minutes against City, that's when they would have normally blown us away mm-hmm. and the game's done. Mm-hmm. And then you're just chasing shadows. You might nick one back, but it's, it's done, mm-hmm. essentially. That was where the, the, the parallels of some of the great Arsenal teams in the past, like for, my, for me, my favourite player as a, as a child was Patrick Vieira. It was like the, the amount of times I saw Vieira roll his sleeves up, Vicks on the chest and just go, you know what? we're not losing today like we, we might not be at our best but i'm going to pick this team up <laughs> and i'm and i'm and i'm going to drag us forward and we are not losing this game today and then eventually the the the, 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 quality, the, the, the quality starts to show and that was it was that first 20 minutes against city where they come out quick they're not going we couldn't really get the ball for the first 20 minutes but we also didn't because of the way Declan Rice played and the groundy that he was covering and and then also I guess like then confidence that, that then gives to the rest of the team. They go, you know what? Almost like Rocky IV, <laughs> all right? Ivan Drago. I always love referencing Rocky. When like such a child of the nineties. When 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 you realise that they 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 aren't a machine. Do you know what I mean? Like they are just eleven versus eleven, but they're very good eleven versus mm. eleven. And I, honestly, the, like the, the ground that Declan Rice was covering on Sunday. That first twenty minutes, the, the way that I think that's how long his like limbs are. Huge. Like, the way he's sticking his, but and and he very very rarely gives the ball away, and that is such an again underrated like kind of like aspect to like a to 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 to, to like a well just a top tier player. Like mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Like you, you, if you think of the greats from just any other great, you you, ne- you never really when you when you think back on them. They can keep the ball moving, like do you know what I mean? And um, yeah, so some of the ground that he was co- uh, kind of like, uh, co- covering, um, he's just absolutely phenomenal. And then Saliba being fully fit for the entire season, I think that, that, was, more, that was the more defining games than factor anyone else. last season. Yeah, but I mean, because I've got it down here, your win percentage last year without him was 46%, with him, 78%. Goals conceded per game, less than half. Uh, goals, shots conceded per game, 8.3 with him, 10.7 yeah. without. It's just, and he hasn't missed a game. It's just unbelievable. Like, it just did have a shaky game against FC Porto it's in fine. the second leg. He's young. No, no, I'm, I'm not trying to take him down. I'm just, I'm just um, saying. But again, in that game, Declan Rice didn't. So, like, mm. and again, that, that's, 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 that's just. As I said, like, there's. The thing also, about, Gabriel. He's, he's, um, you know, what, first, I, I, come on, I've been, let's I've talk been, about I've Gabriel. To, I, I've been to a few games this season. Like, Gabriel is getting better and better. Like, he's... You know what makes him so good now? It's almost like his ability to be 
to, to, to change his strategy within a game. Mm. Like when to impose him, like against like Buddy Harland, he was awesome. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? So, so when to like, okay, give a player a yard, maybe step off and let him, let, let, basically let there's the no attacker make mistakes. There's no silly moments anymore. Yeah. Or when, okay, I'm, I'm going to impose my will on this player and I'm, I'm going to be physically, I'm going to start to physically dominate this player. That's what he did against the, like, Luton centre half yesterday. Mm. And like, he, again, it's another player where like, they're just getting better. People forget as well, he started this season on the bench. I know, I, it's, it's weird. I was. Um, you look back at that first 11 that you played. That, that it was, it was for, it was, I mean, it was the first five games. Yeah. It, was, it was on the bench, I think. And really I weird. Because he'd played every minute last season yeah. as well. And um, yeah, so well, I, I just. It seemingly worked. He's, he's been absolutely brilliant. I don't want to say it, but maybe, thank God, uh, Duran Timberman got injured. That's when it'd be saying. Mm. Um, you know, because big factor for next year, actually. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah. See where he comes back in. I mean, let's talk a little bit about next year. Okay, you can suggest some po like positions you might need to strengthen. Yeah. I've gone away and prepped some potentials. So, like, what positions are you roughly thinking? So, we, I think we definitely need a striker. Okay. And when I say a striker, it's essentially a player. It's just weird because the way that we play, I think he's got his eleven set. So there's two ways of looking at it. It's either a striker that's going to come in and be far superior to one of the forward players that we've currently got. So then we've kind of changed the way that we play. Mm -hmm. Or it's just we identify a striker that is essentially coming in to be a substitute, but then okay. come on when we need them. Right. And I think that's the role that I like Tony for. Hmm. But if you're asking me for who's the striker, I think we should go out and get. It's our man at Newcastle, mate. Alexander Isak. I think. Like, I was going to put him forward. I think. I think he's. Um, he's an Arsenal fan. Is he? He's an Arsenal fan. That's why he wears number fourteen. Oh. Like. Pull on those heartstrings. He. It's just. He's essentially just a world-class striker. Like yeah. he's, he's 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 just a great finisher as well, and I think that's mm, slight aspect that you can it's maybe the, the one area to improve I think across the, the whole of the starting 11 like yeah. you know obviously not expect stretches play as well he's quick yeah. I think sometimes you guys don't stretch play enough sometimes it's a little yeah. too predictable because Saka does run in behind but he's so good with the ball at his feet and Odegaard's ball at the feet player as well like stretching in behind I think it would and be so crucial I think so the problem crucial. with that is now teams have a plan for Saka mm. which on paper should create more space for the other players in the other team. So we then need to be able to find players that can actually exploit that. Yeah. Rather than just start to become a bit predictable. Yeah. You know, like, you know. I mean, I think Martinelli does as well, to be fair. But since Xhaka's departure, he doesn't maybe find the ball in those that gap between the fullback and centre back quite as effectively as he did last year. Anyway, uh, maybe he slightly dipped, although he has had his injury issues as well. But talking about Isak, I mean, same amount of games as last year. He's already added five more goals to his tally. You look at the players that have been injured at Newcastle as well. He's had no Harvey Barnes. Miguel Almiron's dropped off massively. Callum Wilson's been injured. Joe Linton, what, you know, a key part of their press, a key part of the way they create chances in the midfield through his hard work has been injured as well. Joe Willock's been injured. So he's really been, along with Anthony Gordon, yeah. the one guy sort of carrying that Newcastle attack. It's the, the, the one question mark is, like, I guess, is like his injury record. And, and you know, if, if he can stay fit, then... I mean, no player in the league really? averages more goals per 90 than him and his expected goals, so he's not overperforming that massively. His expected yeah. goals per 90 are only second to Erling Haaland. I think he'd be a great fit. The more wild card option, who might even cost the same amount of him, is Victor Yorkeres at Sporting CP. Different, slightly different style of striker in that he's incredibly physical, um, but really, really quick as well. Great channel runner. Has experience in English football as well at Coventry. Yeah. I don't know why no one went for him last summer. He only cost about 25 million euros, I think it was, for Sporting CP. And since then, it's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. 36 goals and 15 assists in 41 games in all competitions. That's Messi numbers. It's Ronaldo numbers. And yeah, people will say, oh, it's the Premier League. You know, the Premier League, look at how well... Porto played against yeah. Arsenal. Look at Benfica reaching three quarterfinals, I think, in the Champions League every year up until now. Look at Sporting CP, you know, giving Atalanta a really good game in the Europa League. Like, these are not bad teams. It's a really competitive top of the Premier League of this year. Sporting CP only one point ahead. Look at the fact Ruben Amarim is now the favourite for the Liverpool job, the Barcelona job. Barna supposedly sniffing around him. I think Victor Yorkeres would be a great fit at Arsenal. The only issue is he's got an 86 million yeah. euro pound release clause, which is a lot of money yeah. on someone that's had 
one exceptional year at the top level. And even then, he's not been doing it in the Champions League, for example. So that is a little bit of a risk. If you have your, your dream selection now, I'm giving you your Kres or Isak. Who are you going for? I think Isak. But also because, like, it's one thing doing it in Championship. And don't worry, phys physically, it's probably a harder league. But, mm. like, technically, Isak has done it, proven, um, in the Premier League. And Fair I enough. think he would just he would just fit very very nicely. All right, dream kitty spent on ESAP, but we've got plenty more money. That's oh. the great thing about Sunday vibes. There's always a bit more Bunsen burner. I like it. Uh, Jacko, what position are you looking at next? Well, I think we need a. So this is one of the reflections from last night. Okay. Was that I think our fringe players. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Like, I think we've kind of just moved past them now, and I think one of the biggest if we want to be a genuine elite club that is constantly challenging and being at that level we need our fringe players to be legitimately challenging the first 11 mm -hmm. and I looked at the players last night and they're so far from what our starting 11 is so I think we need someone are you talking specifics the Nelsons the, he the Smith Rose Smith Rose even you're taking an axe to the Halo. no I'm just I think the I, comments are going to be furious with I, you. even someone like Eddie it's like you know the, there's a great assets financial assets for us to help with our financial fair play because they're all you know you sound like you sound like bloody Todd Bowley because <laughs> they're all profit baby <laughs> um, no no or, or you say to him like we've got nine games left they are going to get more minutes but like I just want to see more mm. I, I would love nothing more but do you not sympathise with them the fact that they're pretty much coming in cold I mean Smith Rose I think started three league games this year I do I do I, I do, no, I do it's for me like I, 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 I want I mm. Now, but I, I want to see more. I, I want, I want, I want them. <laughs> no, but I want, I want them. Please, sir, I, I, I want them creating a legitimate argument for why they should be starting mm. over Saka. Why, um, you know, Smith Rowe deserves more minutes than. Well, Havertz in midfield. Yeah, Havertz. It's right? not going to get anywhere near like, like Buddy Odegaard, cause, who's unbelievable, by the way. <laughs> like just, just that goal was really nice. Just everything about his work rate is. Yeah, just he, he doesn't start. For, for someone who's technically good as what he is, like, he sets the tone, gets mm. them off. Anyway, enough about it. But just these like fringe players, like they're just, they're not, it's not, we've just moved past them. And similar to how when we brought Trossard in, essentially as a squad player, he's at least knocking on the door. When he gets given a chance, he invariably takes it. He does take it. He scores goals. He 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 asked the question, and I think that's 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 to me the, the if we want to become that next level, if we want to like say consistently challenge, then you need a squad that is a is a is a real squad. So what I'm hearing is maybe like a backup winger that could play both sides. Also, I'd just yeah, we need someone. If we get someone who could play on the left or right, then unbelievable. But right. I think the priority get a load of this. is someone on the right. Okay, well, get a load of this. Bakayo Saka has missed more games this year than he has in any previous year. And I do think that is an inevitable fact of playing so many games. You know, For club, for country, he's so, so crucial. I do think it would be good to, not necessarily not for him to start so many games, but he does need to be taken off occasionally yeah. when you're winning games. It has slightly changed a bit in the last couple of months, but... I do think you need a, a proven need quality backup. It's Gareth Southgate to stop picking him for pointless friendlies. <laughs> when he got out of that, he just dropped his source and got out. Fair play. Other sources are available. Right. <laughs> Let's talk wingers, though. Because the name under everyone's hat, is that even a phrase, is Nico Williams of Athletic Club to Bill Bad. Spicy, baby. Very spicy. He can play on the left. I mean, predominantly last year he played on the right. This year he's been playing on the left. I think it's three goals and eight assists in La Liga. This guy is pacey, this guy is direct, this guy has a calmness in front of goal. He's got very good technique. He looks a real threat. He looks like he will be playing Champions League football before too He's long. He's the right age as well. Really good age. Yeah. The only thing with him is, his brother is an athletic club hero, has always stayed loyal to athletic club. Athletic club almost have a, an appeal to their own players because they are Basque only, that it is very difficult to leave. It's a bigger... It's a bigger pull to get them. You know, players have left there, like our Merrick Laporte, etc. But I think it is harder to get a club player out of that. Not only that, but they're in the race for Champions League football. Does he want to leave this summer for Arsenal, a club where I don't think even at his very best, he's guaranteed to start. You know, Martinelli, at his very best, like last year, 
was a real, real threat. Does he knock off Martinelli at his best and at Martinelli's best? It's it's a toss up, really. So that is a that is a question mark. I do think that is a really interesting player. Supposedly his release clause is around fifty million euros. I'd go for him if I could, but from his perspective, I could see why he would turn it down. Another more wild card option is Karim Adeyemi, who plays for Dortmund. He can play on the left, he can play on the right, he can mm. play centrally as well. Super, super quick. Has had a difficult year, a little bit injured, a little bit of loss of form. But at his best for RB Salzburg was, you know, getting picked for Germany, still playing for Salzburg. Was really, really exciting uh, and has serious pace, which I think Arsenal, as I've already laid out, when Martin Lenny's not playing, sort of, sort of lack. He is coming off a slightly poor season, just three goals and one assist. So I have given you two different suggestions there that are very different, having very different seasons. What are your thoughts? Or do you want to suggest someone else? A lot of people say Pedro Neto. It's just his injuries. Mm. It's, it's class. So if we spunk too much money on Isaac, then we'll go for the Dortmund kid. Adeyemi, okay. Um, but if you guys thinking about the, the coffers. But if, if you offer me the choice, it'd be Williams. Mm. I, think, I think he's like, I, I want someone who legitimately could challenge because if not what we're we doing like what's the point in building a squad if they're just going to st- you might as well give it to um, like a youth team player that, that mm-hmm. spot that, that just yeah so uh, it would be Williams okay any other uh, positions well we need a new uh, reserve goalie reserve goalie okay Ramsdale will be sold hopefully for a little profit would be nice do you want a young player coming in do you want someone that l- l- sort of Kelleher that can eventually you know, fill in quite effectively. It's difficult. I think if, them, if, if that plays out there, I think I think it's we did a great job with Turner. To be fair, we brought him for a couple of mil, made a couple of million on him. He did the job for that season. I think now if he's we can third choice at Forest. If we can, <laughs> if we can keep doing that, that's 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 a, that's a nice little um, operation to yeah. kind of get into where you've got your number one mm-hmm. locked in, but you've got someone who's dependable to come in for League Cup, um, and if your goalkeeper gets injured, for example. Um, and then end of each season, keep turning a nice little profit. I think backup goalkeepers are one of the hardest positions to recruit for mm. in, in Europe. I mean, who really wants to go to, if you're 22, yeah. I mean, yes, you want to play for Arsenal, particularly if you're an Arsenal fan or, you know, if you've come from the Premier League or the Eredivisie or, or a league like that. But do you, you know, if you're yeah. at the top of your game playing for one of the biggest clubs in Europe, do you want to go to Arsenal and be back up to David Raya? Like, there's been so many issues this year with Ramsdale being almost too good to be a backup, but every time he's played, He's kind of shown his yeah. lack of confidence. So I actually didn't do any research for that. But if you guys have got any Sorry, backup goals, I just stitched Doogie up there. No, I like it. Midfield, though, I yeah, think is interesting. I think if you look, Jorginho and Thomas Partey, they're at the wrong end of their Jorginho career. Jorginho, 32. Now. I hope we give Jorginho another year. I think he just. Great guy, by it, all accounts. Well, just. Like, it's, 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 you, Never met He's him. like experience. Like, it's, like it's, it's. I know you don't win things just on experience because you, you need you need to also be able to do it on the pitch mm-hmm. but in terms of getting the players ready to do the job on the pitch and be able to come in do five or six games and start like he did against Liverpool at home like just it's, for me it's an absolute no-brainer that he gets given another year if he's happy there he's clearly happy in London like mm-hmm. you know um, you know you, then you start to bring him in the family like you know and you potentially like you know he starts to think about his coaching and all that kind of stuff anyway midfielder <laughs> Thomas Partey and Jorginho I thought you meant into your family he can come down <laughs> he, can, he can he can come and meet uh, Jude and Oscar he can come round <laughs> Jude for would love it by the sounds of this um, yeah they're kind of at the, the as I say like the wrong end I, so are I, you looking for a more defensive minded midfielder to, or are you looking for a more like a number eight and then I think Rice like a be more traditional midfielder okay. like what I used to call like a midfield midfielder okay. so, so not like, like a, a holding Robson. man uh, yeah I guess so <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. do you mean like a proper box to box no like so someone yeah I guess it is more like a box to box kind of player yeah and again like the, the like really good ones cost 100 million pounds they're going to cost a lot um, so but I think that's probably an area that if we identify someone who I guess a little bit like how we it hasn't quite worked out but how we identified Fabio Vieira mm. who's the right age profile we're not expecting him to play 50 games when we sign him you maybe expect him to play 15 though but yeah and what's but, happened there well it just it's a, bit, it's a little bit Kind of like, yeah, like, lightweight. Um, but that that kind of player profile that 
you're kind of you're kind of investing in the potential as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think that is that midfield because okay. I still expect Thomas Partey to be at the club this time next year and, and probably play twenty to twenty five games. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd actually yeah. So so it's then looking at someone who is going to be who who's the heir to that throne in eighteen months time. Yeah, I think. PR-wise, it'd be difficult to give him a new contract, but we'll, we'll see what happens there. I actually think you need to sign a more defensive-minded midfielder. I think Rice is actually so good in that sort of driving role. And, you know, the fact that Jorginho is still there as well means that he can already play it to a certain extent. But I think the, the two names that I picked out are Martin Zubamendu, who plays for Real Sociedad. He's 25. He's in his fourth year of being a regular for Real Sociedad. They've got better year on year, mm. and it's because of the likes of Mikel Marino, Zubamendi, Zubaldia in midfield. Really, really good all-round midfielder. Zubamendi can play as that left-sided eight, can also play as that six. Um, and yeah, he's been brilliant this year. Four goals and one assist in the league. That doesn't really tell the whole story. That's not really his role. But he's incredibly strong in the air. He's won 92% of his aerial duels. So actually, what you tend to put Havertz in that midfield role for, he can do effectively. And then I think he offers a little bit more defensively than Havertz as well, despite Havertz actually contributing pretty effectively in that area as well. Uh, but in the, yeah, Real Sociedad squad, he's very good progressive passer, very good defensive actions, just a really nice all-round midfielder. That is option number one. I think he'd be more expensive than my second option, who is Martin Hulmund, who plays for Sporting CP. You might have noticed that two of my suggestions come from Sporting <laughs> CP. I'm in a little bit of a Portuguese mood. Um, but he was signed from Lecce last year. He played two years in Syria. Now he's at Sporting CP. Again, absolute bargain. I think he's around 16 million pounds. He's got this massive release clause, but actually with the release clauses in Portugal, we generally see them go for a lot less. Um, but yeah, he's been brilliant. He can do a little bit of everything. Very good dribbler as well. Again, a little bit maybe more box to box than Zubamendi, um, but potentially a player to have a look at as well. Are you tempted by either of those? No. You don't want either? The man at Everton. Everton go down. Amadou Amana. I bring him in. I just don't. I put this on Twitter this week and actually took a little bit of flack for it. If they if they go down, I just so think we're paying a lot I mean, less. People are talking about 50, 60 million pounds no, for I shouldn't him. shouldn't pay that much money. I, just don't, I yeah. just don't see it. I think he's good at a number of things. But I, I think he would improve in a better team. I'm sure he would, but I want to see more of him when Everton are about to go down. I think he's been pretty flat for the last six months he played well against England and that's just one game he did play well against England but yeah which you know does make it does matter when most of Twitter only watches a few games of him for Belgium at least yeah um, but Amadou Anana I don't know I'm not totally sold on his price tag no but no. we will see we will see there but if they do go down potentially an option as well the other position I wanted to mention which a lot of people suggested included Lewis Ami on Twitter was a backup centre-back for Saliba now I said this to you in the office and you quite rightly pointed out that actually your options it's quite strong now. Yeah, so obviously Ben White could play centre half if we need to. T Tommy Asu can play centre half. During Timber, when Timber comes back. back, he's going to be like a brand new sign in. Um, <laughs> uh, Declan Rice, worst case, could play centre half, but then you'd miss a lot from where, where else he was yeah. in. So I think, again, it's about looking at the play. Again, if we want to become a super team, it's looking at do we look to buy someone centre half with. We're not expecting him to come in challenged this year. But in 18 months' time, are they ready to challenge a Gabriel or a Saliba or whatever it might be? Or if, you know, after we won the league and the Champions League a couple of times, the Saliba wants to... Uh, that was a I joke, by the way. Anything that, was a joke. That, was, that was a joke, by the way. But, but, that you is going to be clipped up. <laughs> keeping William Saliba at Arsenal is fundamental to any... Do you get the feeling, and I don't know whether this is just me as a neutral, do you get the feeling that he does have ambitions to play for a Real Madrid one day. For some reason, I just see it. I Does that fear worry you? that may be the case. <laughs> but if we continue on the trajectory that we're on, then it will be a lot harder for him to leave because we're in the Even conversations and stuff probably. like that. But... Um, Oh, no, no, as in, as in, like, you know, don't be wrong, Real Madrid is Real Madrid, they come knocking, it, it kind of is what it is. But if you're constantly winning and, you know, then it's, it's you know, maybe they, that kind of comes with a different thing then because then they want to go and try and challenge themselves elsewhere. But um, I, it, it's definitely, I have thought about it in, and it's definitely woken me up in the cold sweats <laughs> a few times. The good thing about the Real Madrid situation is that Edda Militao plays on the right, same position as Saliba. They're a pretty similar age. I think Edda Militao might be 25, so a couple of years older. But yeah, maybe that would mean that Real Madrid looked for more of a, a left-footed option, which could be Gabriel. Who knows? 
Either or. Why, are you, trying to take our, why are you trying to take our... Uh... Yeah, I'm just trying to bring you down to earth after you said you'd won a couple of Champions Leagues and a couple of Premier Leagues. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's talk about the backups to Saliba because Lewis did ask for it. I'm on the same track as Dave. I don't think you want to sign anyone that's close to competing for the mm. first team right now, to be honest, because as you say, what does that do to Timbers minutes? What does that do to to Tommy Asu playing centrally even though I do think he's best off the right although Tommy Asu is just one of those really useful players he's un- unbelievable Kivior as well yeah. so has played really well in the last few months as oh, well oh I forgot I forgot about it. yeah he can play centre as well yeah. uh, one player to potentially have a look at in this dream scenario or sort of imaginary scenario where you don't really need to is Taylor Harwood Bellis Man City Academy graduate England under 20 captain I think he is um, but he was on loan at Burnley last year he's now on loan at Southampton they've had two phenomenal years both Burnley and Southampton but he's had brilliant years at both clubs I think he's ready for a move to the Premier League and yes he probably wants to be playing regular football why would you go from Man City's fifth sixth choice to mm. Arsenal's fourth fifth choice but he is just someone a top club should be having a look at I think he should be playing Premier League football next year the other suggestion is a bit of a wild card Ricardo Calafiori plays for Bologna I know you're a big fan. Massive fan. <laughs> to be fair, the last player we signed from Bologna wasn't too bad. Tommy Asu. So Tommy Asu. Um, if Edu's got his radar on, if he, think, he thinks he's the man. He's a very good, he's an aerial dual dominator, very good with the ball at his feet. Looks like he's got a huge future. Bologna competing for Champions League football this year, which would be an amazing story under Thiago Mata. And calafiori has been absolutely crucial. Uh, so there we have it, guys. We have, it. have you got any you know, final thoughts to Arsenal fans? Do you want to send a little message ahead of the running? Yes, young Arsenal fans, below the age of... Well, if you have never remembered us winning the league, look, it take, we, we need to stay calm, all right? You, you must not get as, as, as like caught up on every single result as it comes in. It's, we've got to trust the process, <laughs> all right? And we've got to stay together, we stay positive, and good times are coming. This season or next? Now. They're coming now. They're We're coming, coming now. Wait. Yeah. I'm going to do something really cruel. If you had to get your crystal ball out, yeah. who do you think, what do you think you're most likely to win the Champions League or the Premier League? Uh, I think our chances are greater in the Premier League just because, you know, cup competitions, like, we, we haven't been there for so long. Like I think we, we well. I think I think I think we learned a lot from last season. And and to be fair, if Liverpool City can go and win eight games on the bounce, they deserve. It is what it is. Do you know what I mean you can hold your hand up? You've, you've we've learned a lot. We dropped some silly points this season, um, cause, and they will drop points at some stage. Like there's no there's no and if, and if they can't, then fair play. They de- they deserve to be champions. Um, so I think the Premier League. Fair enough. There we have it, guys. Show some love to Dave Jackson back from. You know, I was dead. about to say back from the dead, he wasn't dead. He was just you back know, for good. But no, his job. take that. Well, maybe, maybe could be back for good. We maybe have a little Arsenal segment on uh, on every show from now on. I like Only it. joke. No, next week we'll be talking about other teams in the Premier League. But this guy, he's an Arsenal fan. He's an Arsenal fanatic. We had to talk about the Gooners. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. So show show some love. Show some love to Dave Jackson in the comments, and I'll catch you on Monday. Bye bye. Peace.